started, today's topic is school settings and kind of getting started in your account. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log into Arbiter and you're going to come here to the account dashboard. Uh, this is a new updated account dashboard page. Um, so many of you, if you haven't been in since uh, last school year, you may have gotten in and been like, well, oh, this looks different. Uh, this is a new accounts dashboard page. We we really put a lot of emphasis on these schools and their logos in this page. Uh, you'll see the schools that you're a member of listed across the top and then the different associations if if applicable across the bottom. You'll go into your different school account by clicking within the little card here. If you're a member of multiple groups um, or one group but have multiple user types, uh, you can navigate between the different user types of that group by doing so like this. So we'll go to, into a school account today. And the very first place we're going to start off is the settings tab. This is a general settings for your school or your campus. Um, this is kind of a one time step um, that someone within the school would want to go in and complete um, when they're first setting up their school's dashboard. Uh, just some of the general information related to the school and the entity. Um, then you've got some miscellaneous information, the mascot, the logo, the primary color. Uh, the logo in the primary color or two you might want to go ahead and fill out those will be used um, in the public facing platforms that we offer the arbiter live and arbiter mobile platforms which we'll discuss a little bit more on thursday's webinar uh, other than that feel free to you uh, utilize these things down here they're not really impactful across the platform or have much uh, impact in other aspects but uh, for sure this general settings over here and I'd go ahead and take care of uh, the top right up here the primary color and the logo once you do that you can jump over to the preferences page a few things to highlight here you've got two current preferences that you can go through as a school the top option here says prevent others from accepting my game contracts and then prevent opponents from creating new teams um, these two things are kind of optional steps and preferences that you can go through. The first one, prevent opponents from accepting my game contracts. If you are utilizing the game contract portion of Arbiter, um, so if changes are made and you, you are accepting those contracts for those changes to take place, or you are acknowledging your games when they're entered by someone else and accepting those contracts, or if you see a, a bad game and you want to decline that contract. Um, this first option right here basically limits that ability to only yourself. So if this is checked, what this will do is prevent any schools from accepting a contract on your behalf. Um, so if you're, one of your opponents wanted to change something in a game, um, if this was checked, that change would have to be accepted by your school in order for that change to show up on your schedule. However, if this was unchecked, um, that school who made the change could always go in and accept that change mm -hmm. on your behalf um, as well. Uh, so if you are very active in Arbiter, I'd suggest go ahead, ahead and checking this. That way you're the only one that's accepting those game contracts. Um, if you're someone who the contracts is not something you're messing with, you could go ahead and leave that blank there. The second option, prevent opponents from creating new teams. Um, we'll get into the teams list in just a sec when we get under resources. Um, but what this does is it uh, disables anyone else, either an opponent or an assigner from adding a team that is not on your team's list. So if I had a freshman JV and fo uh, varsity football team and, a, and I had this checked, an assigner or an opponent couldn't go add a sophomore bar uh, level football team because it was not included on my team's list. Um, if they wanted to add a game, they could only add a game using one of the designated teams I already had on my team's list if this was checked. If this was not checked and an opponent or an assigner went to add a sophomore level game using one of your teams, it would create a team for your school, throw that team in your team's list, which we'll get to in a little bit. So uh, these are both optional preferences. Um, this is really up to you um, on which route you want to go. Um, but if you're really active in Arbiter, I would highly suggest going in. Just go ahead and clicking both of these and saving those preferences. I had someone ask they don't have uh, access to the school page or the preferences page. Um, there are certain user types, which we're about to get into, um, where some of that stuff is limited um, depending on uh, kind of the access level of the Arbiter game dashboard that you have. Um, so that's what we'll get into next is adding staff and uh, customizing the different roles associated with staff. 
um, to add staff into your account. So this is if you wanted to add a coach or wanted to add someone from the business office, um, or maybe there was a changeover in athletic directors, you're going to come over here to the people tab and you've got your school staff list here. Um, this is where you can see who is added as an admin into your account. Um, and from there, you've got a couple different things on this page. You've got the title of the specific person. You've got their name and email address. You've got their actual physical address, their phone number. And then you've got this role over here. Um, roles is probably the first thing you should set up before you actually start adding staff members. Um, and you may not have the uh, option to uh, modify roles if you've got uh, limited abilities within Arbiter. But if you do have the option to modify roles, you can come here to this roles tab. And basically, this is you setting up permission sets for the three different types of roles that we currently offer. We offer an admin role, a payer role, and a staff role. The admin role um, cannot be customized. It's pretty much a uh, permission set that gives the user access to anything and everything within this dashboard. Um, the payer role and both the staff role are customizable roles. So you can come in here where you see the pencil and then you can come through the different uh, permission sets that we've got available within the dashboard and choose which permission sets that specific role gets. Um, so potentially someone as a payer role may only need access to the payroll tab. So you could come in here, uh, uncheck the schedule tab, the eligibility tab, the people tab, but they would need access to everything payroll related. Maybe there's someone in the business office who doesn't really care about what the schedule looks like, but uh, they need to uh, make sure they have access to everything when it comes to payroll. They would definitely need access to this payroll tab and then maybe the reports tab to pull some reports for payroll. But then you may get into a staff role and potentially want to add a coach. Um, with that, I, I would say probably the best thing is it's unchecking everything except this top option that says schedule view only. Um, if given this schedule view only access, which may be the access that some of you on this call have, um, what this does is it locks down most of the tabs and features within Arbiter, except viewing the schedule, viewing the games, um, potentially seeing who those officials are on those games. Um, but other than that, it doesn't let the person edit anything on that game. Um, and then it pretty much restricts their access across the board here with accessing any of these tabs or sub tabs as well. So um, that would be given to someone uh, who had kind of bare minimum access. A lot of times we see uh, schools add coaches with some of that scheduled view only access just to kind of limit their abilities there. Um, so once you've got those roles set, you can come back over to this staff tab and you're ready to add the staff members related to your school. Um, you may have been added as the athletic director, the initial one on the account. Um, the athletic director um, has that ability to go in and add, modify, uh, take out those staff uh, members. So to do so, you come right here to add new staff member. You enter that staff member's email address. Oops. And you click go. If that staff member is already a member in Arbiter, maybe they had been in previous school or an assigner had added them, it will pre-populate their information here. Otherwise, you can come in here, add first name, last name, and then any uh, required fields will also need to be filled in. You can click create user. And your next step is giving that user a title as well as a role. So the roles, like I said, would apply to those that you've uh, set up already. And then these titles are a list of preset titles that we do offer. Um, we did add five or six titles this summer, um, bookkeeper, business manager, CFO, uh, fine arts director, tournament director, and transportation admin. So uh, added a few additional roles there. I believe superintendent was also added. So. Um, if you do need to use some of those additional roles or you want to modify existing staff members that may have been added with a title of, uh, I don't know, admin assistant and they're actually a superintendent, feel free to go in there. You can come in here, click the pencil and always uh, modify a title or a specific role. Um, and all of that can be controlled by you. Um, I would say probably the one area where we get the most questions is, uh, what to do when you change athletic directors at the end of a year. Um, if that does happen and athletic directors need to change and someone does not have access to come in here and change that, 
that usually does take a, a phone call or an email to our support office and they can certainly uh, help you get through that process of getting the account changed over from one user to another if you have an athletic change athletic director change or an admin change all right so, so those are some of the logistics with uh getting the account initially set up um the next step that you're going to want to do is come in here to your resources tab um, and this is really where you're going to build out the uh, items related to your school, the opponents that you may play throughout the year, the sites you may use throughout the year, and then the teams that your school houses. Um, so the first place we're going to start is the opponents list. Um, this is where you're going to want to come in at the beginning of the school year and go ahead and add any opponents that you may play in any sport throughout the year um, to this list. You can also remove opponents from this list, although it doesn't really hurt to have an opponent in this list. You may play them at some uh, point and it save you a step of having to go add them back. A um, few things about this page that you can do. Um, if you've already got an opponent in this list, you can always email um, the opponent, which just includes the different contacts at that school. Um, if you wanted to see the different contacts at that school, um, over here on the right hand side, it lists the number of contacts. You can click on that. Um, it'll open the page, show you the different contacts related to that entity or school. And then you also have the ability to click the checkbox next to one of those opponents and actually email those contacts at that school as well. So it'll bring up a little pop up module you can shoot out a customized email to those uh, opponents. You can also add or remove opponents to this list. Um, if you're going to want to use an opponent in a game, tournament, meet, practice, event, whatever it may be, they've got to be added to this list first. Um, if you go in to try and create a game and that opponent's not in your opponent's list, you're not going to pull that opponent up when you try to add that game. So come in here. Um, it's going to look at the zip code that you added under school settings, um, and then you can modify within 10, 25, 50, or 100 miles. Um, if you're trying to add a school or a uh, entity outside of that 100 miles within your zip code, this zip code can actually be modified. Um, I have a lot of uh, users sometimes that'll email me and say, hey, I've got this opponent. They're in a different state. I can't pull them up because they're, with, uh, they're uh, over 100 miles with outside my zip code. All you got to do is come in here, modify this zip code. A lot of times I tell users, Google whatever that school is, copy their zip code, throw it in here, click find opponents, and it will find everyone within 10 miles of that updated zip code. So um, it'll help you instead of looking within 100 miles and sifting through a lot of different opponents here, um, you do within 10 miles of a specific zip code. It'll uh, definitely make this a smaller list to look through. Um, when you do have someone you want to add, all it takes is clicking the checkbox next to that opponent's name, and it'll let you know that that opponent was added. Um, to remove an opponent, you just come into the same screen, and you'll see that they've already been checked, and you just uncheck that opponent, and it will remove them from your list. Um, if you can't find an opponent that you're looking for, um, it'll send you the option to send us an email. Um, we have you go through us because we don't want to just keep adding opponents if they're already listed. A lot of times they may just be under a different name in the system. Um, so I would encourage you that if you're having issues finding an opponent, you might try a couple different variations of that name before you uh, shoot an email to support and have us add that opponent. Um, but a lot of times there's new schools that pop up or name changes at schools. If that happens, shoot us an email. We'll get those schools added for you. All right, so after you've got all your opponents set, um, you're going to come over here to the sites list. Um, and this is where you're going to, one, make sure your default site is set up correctly. Two, add any uh, basically secondary sites that you might be using throughout the year for your different sports or practices or non-athletic events, whatever it may be. Your default site is going to be indicated by not having a trash can next to it. Basically, um, what that does is it puts attaches one specific site to a school. Um, but and the whole purpose behind that is to try and get a little bit more consistency within our platform. We want the assigners and the school is using the same site 
instead of the assigners having one site they use, the officials having another site they use, the schools having a site they use, and the public having a site they use. We want it to be one site that everyone uses, everyone has the same details related to that site, um, and at the end of the day, everyone arrives to the same site. So uh, default sites are marked by not having a trash can. Uh, satellite sites or secondary sites, um, you are able to delete from your account if you, you don't need them there. Um, you may come into this list and there may be a few sites you see that you don't need. Feel free to delete those. Otherwise, I'd suggest coming into at least your default site, um, making sure the address information is correct. Um, if the name is not correct to, to how you properly display that name, go ahead and change that here. And then you're going to want to add these subsites related to that site. Um, the best way to kind of think of sites and subsites is a subsite is within a site. Um, so for a high school, subsites could be a baseball diamond or a gym or an auditorium or a classroom. Normally, subsites contain the same address as the overall site. Um, where you would want to actually separate subsites and create them as actual sites would be if they had different addresses. Um, so for some uh, schools, I see football stadiums often having different uh, addresses as the actual high school. In that case, you'd probably want to create a site for your high school and then a site for your um, football stadium. Um, the reason you'd want to do that instead of adding that football stadium as a subsite is because when you go and add the high school as the overall site with a subsite of football stadium, they're going to get this uh, high school address. Um, so you don't want fans trying to pull up that location for that game or officials pulling up that location for that game, showing up to the high school when the game's actually two miles down the road at the football stadium. So that's probably my best uh, description of how to separate out those sites and subsites. If the subsite has the same address, and it needs to be a subsite of that site. If it's got a different address, I would probably separate it, create two sites. Um, most schools do have some subsites, like I said, gyms. Um, you may throw in an auditorium, a classroom, uh, softball, baseball, track and field. It really just depends on your school um, and where everything is located. But uh, you do want to go ahead and make sure to add those sites there. Um, additional sites that you may want to add, Maybe you want to throw in your golf competitions or your cross country competitions, your uh, track competitions, and maybe those are held at different sites than your high school. Um, that's where you would come in here. And this works a little bit like the opponents tab does where uh, you've got the different options of zip code. Um, and this is going to look at that school setting zip code again. And then you can just change within 50 miles or whatever and look up a specific uh, location. You get those sites listed here and you can click on any sites that you wanted to add. add. So maybe you were looking for a golf course um, and you wanted to add that golf course. You can click it here, click I'm done man managing home sites and it would add that golf course to your list. And then if you needed to, you could always go in and modify that specific golf course. If the name was incorrect or maybe there was a typo in the address, um, those are things you could modify in that sites list. Um, so a lot of what I'm showing you in this school settings webinar are things that are typically done um, when you're first setting up your account. Um, schools are usually not having to come back into these sub tabs um, and consistently at or constantly add new things um, unless you're constantly adding new sites at your schools. Um, this is usually one of those things that you get it out of the way at the beginning of the setup of your account and it's not something you're having to come in and mess with too too often. Um, the final thing and the thing that I'll wrap up this webinar with um, and probably one of the most important things when setting up your account um, in your Arbiter uh, dashboard is the teams list. So we go over to the teams list. The very first thing you're going to want to make sure you do is have an accurate teams list. So let's say your teams list shows 100 teams and your school actually only fields 50 teams probably a red flag that we've got to clean up that teams list a little bit. The very first thing I would do is go in and try and delete any teams um, where you can delete a team that's no longer at your school. To delete a team, you come in, click on this team, 
click down here where it says delete team. It'll give you a pop up. Say yes, delete that team. They'll be removed from your list. A few things that would prevent you from deleting a team. Um, if that team has scheduled games previously in the system, those games would have to be wiped out first before you could delete that team. If that team has previous rosters in the system, those rosters would have to be removed before uh, wiping out that team. Uh, you also have the ability to merge teams, which is basically saying, let's say one year um, I had an A and B squad. The following year, I didn't have enough students to fill an A and B squad, and I needed to basically merge this B squad into this A squad. I would go through these same processes of deleting the team, but you'll get this drop down that says before deleting this team, select a team that rostering games will be reassigned to. That's where you would select this new team or the other option for squad. Click delete team and it would remove that B team. And then if we didn't want the squad name for the A team, we could always come back in here to the A team and actually delete that squad name and click save. And now you've got that one squad for junior varsity instead of the two squads. So the very first thing, like I said, come in here, make sure your list is accurate um, by deleting any unneeded teams. The second thing is adding new teams. So to add new teams um, to get that list accurate, you come here to create new team. And you'll come here. Very first thing you're going to do is sport. Um, quick note there, we did add a few additional sports this summer. Um, we added bocce, we added esports, and then we also added pickleball. Um, if you've got suggestions or need any additional sports added, we do have a feedback portal. Uh, feedback, uh, I believe it's feedback at arborsports.com. Um, we can post that in the chat here in a little bit, but if you've got any additional sports that need to be added, that can be done there. Um, so here you select your sport. We'll throw in a team there. You select your level and gender. From there, we've also added the ability to now add a, a specific coach to a team. Um, so this has been added uh, recently. Um, and your coach list will actually pull from the staff list that I showed you earlier. So um, they would have to be added as a staff member to your school first. And then from there, um, you can add that specific staff member as a coach to a specific team. Um, currently, we do limit one coach per team, and we don't really have a, a specific variation between head coach and assistant coach. Um, we do have future plans for that, but as it currently sits, one coach per team, um, and then you'll see some additional build out of that coach input uh, in other areas of the platform as we go throughout this webinar series. Uh, so coach, it's an optional thing. You don't have to have a coach if you don't want to. Uh, your next step is setting up the defaults related to this team. Setting up your defaults is really important because it's going to save you quite a bit of time uh, later on, um, as we'll see later on in some of our webinar discussions, um, especially when creating games. If you've got those defaults set up when creating games, you're going to find that it's a lot easier to get those games created. So you've got a default site a default assigning group, and then default times associated with your specific teams. So here you're going to select a default site. This is just going to be the site that is typically used when this team's uh, used in a game. So if you created a home game using this team, this is the default site that's going to pre-populate um, when creating the game. Now you can always change that. Uh, the second part here, the officiating part, this is a really key important part if your games are assigned by an Arbiter 1 group or an assigner using Arbiter. If they are, you're going to want to select an Arbiter 1 assigning group here. Then click here where it says add another group. If your group is associated to a state association using Arbiter, you're going to get a drop down here of all the groups that are associated to your team that you could choose from. Otherwise, you're going to have to type in a custom group number here. So you would need to get your assigner's group number. You would type that group number in here. And then if they had a corresponding level in their group, which this one, two, three, four, five, six does not, um, they would see that group pop up here and then they could select this assigner level and choose the appropriate assigner level that matches this team. Um, so that's a pretty important step if you do have a team 
where um, that team is associated to an assigner using Arbiter to assign the officials. You'd want to make sure this officiating section is filled out. However, if it's a team that does not require officials, you can leave that blank here by saying no officials required. Or if it's a team where the school itself is actually making the assignment of the officials, you can change this to assigned by school and then choose the number of officials typically required for one of those games or matches. And then the final thing here is the default times related to that team. Um, you've got game start time, which is probably the biggest area that you'd want to go in and change, and then the game duration. Um, you can also update the setup, dismiss, uh, departure times. That's mainly related to facility and transportation. Um, which we'll get into a little bit when we're uh, showing you how to create games. But uh, really the, the important ones here, um, as I've mentioned, are location, officiating, and then making sure this game start, game dur duration are all set up. Um, get all those things done and go through each one of your teams and make sure your defaults are set up. It's going to make uh, the process of adding games um, a lot easier for you. And we typically see that if people will go in and fill all this out uh, to begin with, they're typically not having to come back into these pages that we've showed you today uh, too often because these are typically things done at the beginning of setting up the account. Um, and if they're done correctly, then you're not having to come back in here too often to modify those things. So uh, that is going to wrap it up um, for our setting up your accounts. Uh, I know I covered quite a few things today. Start it off in the settings tab. Uh, feel free to poke through these additional sub tabs if you do have access um, and you can learn about additional things. Um, and then go ahead and take a look at your resources tab. Jump in here, get started on opponents. Uh, just take a look at your sites, make sure that list is accurate. And then finally, uh, definitely pay some attention to your team's list as I typically say this is the most important sub tab within your Arbiter dashboard because it makes so many other things a lot easier if you go and spend a few additional minutes taking care of that team's tab. Um, it'll make things easier. So I'm getting a lot of comments that say people don't have access. Um, I will have to take a look at uh, your specific specific user type um, and your different uh, permission sets. Um, I will probably reach out to each of you individually since there's not too terribly many that have reached out um, and we'll go from there as far as uh, maybe what needs to change in order for you to get some of these different uh, edit functionalities that I've shown you today. Um, but anyway, thank you all for joining. Uh, we'll have a second webinar tomorrow um, and in tomorrow's webinar we'll be covering scheduling events so everything from adding games to adding workers to adding officials um, so come and join those webinar series um, if you haven't signed up or registered for those you can do so there's a little pop-up that should pop up within your schedule tab um, if it's not done that you can also check out our social media um, we've got those links to those registrations posted on our social media as well so thank you all um, and I will follow up with those that have reached out um, and ask questions and hopefully get those questions answered. Thank you all.